Hello and welcome to part 3 on the series on computer networks. So in this part we are going to discuss about the basic hardware components related to computer networks. So what are the components that are required in smooth transfer of signals from one node to another node? We'll discuss about those components. I hope you have already watched part 1 and 2 of this series. If not, you can check out the link in description. So the first networking hardware component is the modem, which is also known as modulator, demodulator. A modem, it looks like this. So you can check out modem. So this is how a modem looks like. So you'll just ignore the diagram which is given in the slide. Means you will ignore this diagram. I have put it by mistake. So what is modem? It is a device or program that enables a computer to transmit data over telephone or cable lines. So all of you know that computers understand only digital signals but telephone wires understand only analog signals so let's say a computer is there which is a and your job is to send data from a to b and let's say this is telephone wires now for send now the problem is that computers understand only digital data means a will understand only digital data and b will understand only digital data so for sending these digital signals over this telephone wires which understand only analog data we require a device known as modem or modulator demodulator what a modem does a modem converts digital signals to analog signals and then sends the data over telephone wires so so what a will do a will a understands only digital data so this digital data is converted into analog data and then they are transmitted through this telephone wires conversion from digital to analog it is known as modulation and then after the data travels and reaches near b now b do not understand this analog data so again a reconversion is required so for that a modem will also be there in the node b and what b will do b will convert the the what the modem at b will do the modem at b will convert the analog data back to digital data this conversion from analog data back to digital data is known as demodulation okay so in a modem we have both the functions modulation and demodulation so you may ask the node a is doing the work only of modulation and the node b is doing the work only of demodulation so why both the functions are required in a modem this is because now a is sending data to b some other day b might also want to send data to a so in that case b will require the work of modulation and a will require the work of demodulation so for this reason both the facilities are provided in modem so so the things the theory part it is given here you can just write it down as a part of the notes next networking device is network card or nic card or the network interface card so if you do not want to connect your computer to a network this card is not required but if you want to connect your computers for exchanging information to other computers then you require a card known as nic card or network interface card this is how an nic card looks like so a network card or a network adapter or nic card is a piece of computer hardware designed to allow computers to communicate over a computer network so for computers to be able to communicate with other computers this card is a necessity nowadays in all the computers that you buy from the market it is inbuilt so there is a term related to nic card and I'm going to discuss that term. This is not a networking device, okay? This is just a term which is related to NIC card, so I'm discussing it here. So it is known as MAC address. So with every NIC card, what is NIC card? It is a network interface card that is used for connecting your computers 
for that, that is used so that your computers can connect to other computers so with nic card there is an address which is known as mac address or media access control so mac address is a six byte address where each byte is separated by a colon so this is the typical syntax of a mac address the first three parts it is given by the manufacturer and the next three parts it is known as the card number so the manufacturer id it is given by a an organization known as ieee or institute of electrical and electronic engineers so it is a six byte address and it looks in the format as follows so this is a an example of a mac address so the next network device is wi-fi card all of us know that uh, if we purchase a mobile or if we purchase a laptop wi-fi comes inbuilt but if you purchase a desktop does wi-fi comes inbuilt no it does not come so for that you require a card which is to be uh, installed externally that card is known as wi-fi card wi-fi card wi-fi card looks as shown in the figure this is how a wi-fi card looks like it is an external or internal LAN adapter with built-in wireless radio and antenna. So most common use of Wi-Fi card is in desktop computers. In other devices like mobiles, in iPads or in laptops, it comes inbuilt. But if you want to make your desktop uh, connected to Wi-Fi network, then you have to use a Wi-Fi card. So it is fitted to PCI slot. So how a PCI slot look like so this is the uh, motherboard of a desktop computer so here various other slots are there so out of this the one highlighted is called as the PCI slot so if you want to connect your desktop to a computer you need to connect your Wi-Fi card to one of these PCI slots next is a switch so this is how a switch look like so let's see the work of a switch so switch is a device used to segment network into different sub networks so suppose there is a network let's say there, there is a network of let's say 10 computers so the these 10 computers will be connected to each other now if you want to divide this entire network into three three small small networks let's say the first network will consist of three computers the second network let's say will consist of two computers and next network will let's say consist of four computers four five six seven eight nine okay let's say the third network will consist of five computers so what we are doing we are converting the entire big network of 10 computers into three small networks so who does it it is done with the help of a switch so it is a device used to segment a network into different sub network sub network means dividing a bigger network into certain smaller networks so what is the use of converting a bigger network into smaller segments so it prevents traffic overloading so that uh, no problem of traffic congestion occurs segmenting is done what is the use of switch the use of switch is to forward packets from one node to another node in a network next network device is your the bridge this is how a bridge looks like so it establishes a connection between two lands with the same standard but with different types of cable so if there are two networks two LAN networks but and they have the same protocols I'll discuss about protocols in a different part so this, uh, this is one network let's say this is a this is another network if you need to connect these two networks and let's say we have uh, let's say the protocol of this is HTTP the protocol of the network let's say this is N1 this is N2 let's say these two communicate with the same protocols but with different different types of cables then how to communicate between N1 and N2 the communication will happen with the help of a network device known as a bridge 
is it clear so this is how a bridge looks like next networking device is a router so the main work of so this is how a router looks like the main work of router is to forward data packet between computer networks it performs the traffic directing functions on the internet and it can handle multiple protocol so let's say this is your router okay and this is a network let's say now let's assume your job is to send data from let's say this is node a a to b now the best route is typically this but now let's say some other packets are already moving through this route let's say then your packet cannot travel through this this route so in that case what will be done in that case your packet will be will travel through a different empty route and who will do this routing function this routing function will be done with the help of a router next is a gateway so gateway is very similar to the bridge but the difference is that gateway can handle multiple protocols so here this is the diagram of a gateway so if two networks are there let's say this is one network this is another network now this network let's say it connects it works with the protocol http let's say this network works with the protocol ftp now how these two network will communicate with one another for communicating with network which follows different protocols we require a device which is known as your gate way so in an enterprise the gateway node often serves as a proxy server firewall so this gateway node is often works as a firewall also next is an access point so what is an uh, so this is the diagram of an access point so now what is the use of a access point an access point is a hardware device that establishes connections of computing devices on wireless lan with a fixed wire network so suppose you want to take broadband connection for your home and let's say the connection is wired connection suppose at first when you applied for the connection you had only one desktop computer so you went to a network service uh, provider let's say mnet and they came to your house and they installed the network into your computer but after suppose let's say after two three months you wanted you purchased two mobile also now you want that the same network connection now you want to use the same network connection with your mobiles also so for that you will require a device known as access point what the access point will do the access point will convert your fixed wire network into a wireless network so it will not hamper the previous connection so that previous connection will be in wired manner only and with the use of the access point it will also be converted into a wireless network so that with the same connection you are using both wired network also and the wireless network also next is a repeater as i already discussed in part two about repeaters so this is how a repeater looks like so what is the work of repeater the work of repeater is to transmit a signal at a higher level so that the signal can trans, uh, travel to a longer distance without any degradation so let's try to understand it let's say this is a node a this is a node b and you are using a wire here now let's say the range of signal is one 
kilometer that means after one kilometer your signal will suffer from attenuation now so what is attenuation you for knowing about attenuation please refer to part two so let's say after one kilometer your signal will suffer attenuation so its strength will be reduced now how to increase the strength for increasing the strength you will use a device known as repeater so let's say the distance from a to b is your five kilometer so after every one kilometer you need to put one one repeater so that the signals are retransmitted at a higher level so for ethernet configuration if you use ethernet cables then after about every 100 meters repeaters are required the next networking device is a hub so this is a the diagram of a hub so as you can see there are multiple ports in a hub so a hub contains multiple ports when a packet arrives at one port it is copied to all the ports of the hub suppose there are three nodes a b and c they are connected to different different ports of the hub now let's say a wants to transmit some message a will transmit the message to the hub so when the packet will arrive at the hub it will be copied to all the other ports of the hub let's say to b also it will be copied and to c will also be and to c also the packets will be copied after the packets are copied the data which a wants to send let's say xyz so xyz will be copied to b also to uh, to this port also to this port also after that from the port the packets will travel to b also and to c also so this is the work of a hub you will get to know more about hub in the topology part of computer networks so that's all for today stay tuned for part four of computer networking thank you very much